This is replay mode. And it's awesome. But you have to admit, the HUD is just a little confusing. Yeah. So in this video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about replay mod so you can start filming your own cinematic shots in Minecraft. Before we begin, I have to mention some of the terms I will be referring to throughout the video. The main terms being recording and playback. Now, when I say the term recording, I'm referring to the full recording of your world. And when I use the term playback, I'm talking about the watchable keyframed clip which also determines what the final exported clip will look like. Now this is extremely important to remember, so you don't get any more confused than you already need to be. And enjoy. So let's begin. Once the mod is installed, this is how to start, stop and pause your replay recording. This is where to access the recordings you have already made. And this is how to move through time in your recording. Now, like I said, Replay Mods HUD is a little complicated, but there's actually only two things you need to know to be able to make anything. How to use the time keyframe and the position keyframe. These have two uses each. Now, that's very important. Make sure you don't forget that. The time keyframe determines when in the recording the camera will start and stop filming from, as well as the relative speed of the recording in your playback. The position keyframe determines the camera's position within your recording and how fast the camera moves through the playback. If that is just utterly confusing, don't worry, I explain everything and give examples in much, much more detail later in the video. So let's focus on the time keyframe for a second. Like I said, the time keyframe determines when in the recording the camera will start filming, as well as the speed of the recording. If I want to show myself running across this bridge, then all I have to do is click play and wait until my character gets there. And if I save the time keyframe here, and here, the replay shot will last 10 seconds, both in the playback and the recording. If I then move the time keyframe to the 5 second mark, half the time that we previously had it at, it will make the playback go half the time. This means that everything in your playback will now go at double the speed. Now this is probably the most common problem that stops beginners from learning replay mod. People tend to forget that the time keyframe determines when in the recording the playback will start and stop from, usually ending up with an unintentional slow motion shot or a sped up one. But there is a simple solution to all of this. All you have to do is never drag the time keyframes. Don't do this, this is nearly always bad. The only way to get the real speed of the recording is to have your player where you want them at the beginning of your shot, Keyframe it, then click this specific play button and wait until the player is where you want them to be at the end of your shot. And of course, keyframe it. Then, and almost only then, will the playback be running at a normal speed. The reason I say this is because once you drag the time keyframes, you are telling Replay Mod that you don't want the playback to go at a normal pace, but instead either super sped up or in slow motion. Now, some people, of course, use this feature to their advantage, like a time lapse or for drama, but my advice for now, if you're learning this program, don't drag the time keyframes. It only makes it more confusing. <laughs> now time for the position keyframe. Now, the position keyframe is much, much easier to use and learn because if you drag this one around, it only changes the speed of the camera and doesn't actually break your playback. As I said, the position keyframe determines the camera's position within your recording. This means if we move the camera here in the recording, then keyframe that position, that position will be saved from the recording in your playback. If you want to have the camera to move from one point in your recording to another, then you will need two different position keyframes. One to show where the camera needs to start, and the other to show where the camera needs to end. 
Now the playback will look like this. As I said previously, the position keyframe also determines how fast the camera moves in the playback. This means if there are two position keyframes placed 10 seconds apart, the camera will take 10 seconds to get from your first keyframed position to your second keyframe position. If I move them 5 seconds apart, the camera will take 5 seconds to get from your first keyframe position to your second keyframe position. Now, the speed of the camera is also affected by the distance between the two keyframe positions in the recording. This means if I set the camera positions really far apart, it still needs to get from the first keyframe position to the second in the same amount of time, meaning it will go much, much faster. Now, there is only one more thing that I really have to show you. If you have a shot that's keyframed and you're happy with it, then all you have to do is click on this little export button, scroll past all the settings and click render. Now, if you have never rendered a replay recording before, it will probably ask you to download some sort of FFmpeg file. Just click on the link, follow the steps, and you'll be able to render all the replay shots you'd like. If you've understood anything I've been trying to explain in the last couple of minutes, then you have all the tools you need to make anything in replay mod. And for the rest of the video, if you're still a little confused, which I don't blame you, use flashback mod or would just like some more examples of replay mod and how it actually works. I'll be making a few replay shots of my own that you can watch and follow along with. And of course, if you got anything out of the video, please consider subscribing because I love making videos.